welcome to Elements of Ayurveda, Empowering Wisdom of Life. I'm your host, Colette, and in this podcast, I hope to empower you to take charge of your own health by sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, the ancient healing tradition from India. We will also discuss topics like health and wellness, nutrition, yoga, fitness, meditation, breath work, and much more, as well as interviewing lots of inspiring people along the way. My humble wish is to help you to connect to your true nature, to Mother Nature, and to each other. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe to the show, and the new episodes will automatically download for you to enjoy. If you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend you listen to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. I've also set up a Facebook group for us to connect and to support each other. And I'd love for you to join me over at Elements of Ayurveda podcast group. And now here's the show. Hi there. Before we start the show, I have a couple of announcements. The first one is, as I mentioned in last week's podcast, where we're celebrating two years of the podcast, I'm holding a special competition right now. The competition prize is a free entry into the upcoming autumn seasonal cleanse and the competition is open right now and you can click on the link in the show notes or you can go to my website elementshealingandwellbeing.com forward slash competition and enter there. The competition closes September 6th and the cleanse starts September 20th. So make sure that you get your entry in now to be in with a chance to win a free Ayurvedic seasonal cleanse. I also wanted to remind you about my upcoming Ayurvedic and yoga retreat, which is happening in the south of France, October 11th to the 13th. So that's coming up very soon. So for details on that, click on the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com forward slash retreat. So there you go. Best of luck for the competition. And I hope to see you in the south of France in October. But for now, let's get on with the show. Hello, and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. Today, I have a returning guest, Ayurveda physician Manakshi Gupta, who joined us back in episode number 90 with a fascinating discussion on ADHD. But today, the conversation is going to be all about pregnancy. And in fact, we may do two episodes here. This first episode is going to be on preconception and pre-planning for pregnancy. And then in another separate episode, we're going to do a month-by-month diet and lifestyle during pregnancy and postpartum and breastfeeding. Because there's so much information that we have to share. Isn't that correct, Wadi Amanakshi? Yes, it is. There is a lot of information. Yes. yes. Well, welcome back to the show. And I'm really excited to get into this information. I think the view that Ayurveda has on preconception, on pregnancy itself, and in particular postpartum, I think is really a view that is very holistic and very healing, of course, not only for the baby, but for the mother. And I think these are certainly some ancient traditions that we could bring into the modern lifestyle to ensure that the mother and baby are supported during this time. So please share with us. Let's, I guess, start talking about the preconception stage. First of all, what is considered preconception and what do we have to be aware of in this stage? Uh, thank you for having me on this podcast, uh, Kali, first of all. Yeah. So today we are going to talk about uh, preparing for the pregnancy, how we can prepare our body for the pregnancy. And there are a lot of evidences that when you prepare for the uh, pregnancy beforehand, uh, it helps in going through the pregnancy. And afterwards also, uh, your health and your baby's health will be really, really good. Mm. So in Ayurveda, we say that uh, uh, there are certain sanskars. Sanskars here means um, uh, we say that uh, subconscious impression or uh, good actions, which we need to do. And one of the sanskar is uh, garbh sanskar. Mm. Garbh sanskar, that means garbh means uh, fetus in the womb. And sanskar, as I said, good action or work. So it's a technique of educating fetus, physical and mental purification before the conception. And that is very important because 
it is the process of increasing the uh, potential in the baby as well as in the ourselves. And if we uh, technically see the word sanskar is a, a Sanskrit word, it has multiple meaning. Mm. Uh, means to improve or to purify, to remove shortcoming. So if you see in a broader way, so that means to improve, to improve the quality of the health of the baby and the mom and to purify the toxins, whatever the toxins we accumulate on day to day basis, mm. uh, physical as well as mental toxins and to remove the shortcomings so that the baby is healthy and the mom is healthy. And there are so many scientific evidence also, if you see that, that baby inside the mother wombs respond to certain stimuli, the music, when mm-hmm. you talk to the baby, and the baby has, uh, the fetus have the ability to listen. So before going to the pregnancy, if we prepare the body, uh, uh, do the Gerbson scar, uh, that means uh, uh, that in Ayurveda, we believe that the child's mental and behavioral development uh, will be really, really good. Wonderful. And it is true that pregnancy in itself is almost like a detox for the mother, right? Because everything is obviously going through to through the umbilical cord to the fetus. So the, the mother has to be very aware of the condition of her body, physically and mentally prior to conception in order to ensure that the best is going through to the fetus. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, there are so many researches have been done that the uh, fetus personality begins to take shape in the womb. Mm-hmm. And that is directly influenced by mother's state of mind during pregnancy, as well as uh, uh, the bija. Bija means here the ovum and uh, the sperm quality also. We'll talk uh, later about that also. So that that is pre-pregnancy means preparing the body well in advance before conceiving. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that will help in greatly in having a healthy pregnancy as well as the healthy child. Wonderful. And it is... And it is not only for mom, it's for both the partners. Yes, yes. That was something I was about to mention. We don't want all the focus and pressure to be on mom. It's very much it takes two to to produce a baby. So yes, both partners need to be aware of this. And I think it's good that both partners go through this preconception stage because it really, for want of a better word, gets your head in the game for a baby on board. And especially when dad doesn't go through the physical changes and so on there can be less of a, an awareness of what's coming. And um, and I think that, yes, both parents going through this preconception really prepares both of them for this um, new life coming in and mentally prepared for this new, new change. And definitely, uh, in uh, as per Ayurveda, we say that pregnancy should be by choice. Mm-hmm. When you do that by choice, or if the couple is not in the state of mental stability or calmness, even if they are physically fit, if the pregnancy is not by choice, they cannot give birth to a healthy child. Mm-hmm. So their mental state, uh, calmness, stability, uh, more sattva guna, which we say that purity of mind uh, is closely related to uh, their food habits, the choices they make. And that uh, brings down the quality of the ovum and the sperm. And that's how they can achieve the healthy progeny. Exactly. Yeah. And I just did an episode actually on that, on the um, digestive process or the nutrition of the datus, where the the datus, the reproductive tissues are the most subtle tissue in the body and they are formed from the food we eat. So for anyone out there listening, there is a whole episode on that. I believe it's episode number 92 that um, <laughs> that deals with nutrition of the datus. So what you eat becomes the tissues of the body and then the most subtle tissue is the reproductive tissue, uh, which is so important then to be aware of what you eat. And on another note, before I leave you go on, Wadia Manakshi, is that I know there was some research done on the umbilical cord um, of the of for the baby, obviously, and that there was a huge amount of toxins found in the umbilical cord at birth. So this is just to reinforce the importance of preconception. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll I'll tell you one thing. When we do the pre-planning of pregnancy, it is just like when you are uh, sowing the seed. 
So if you are familiar with the agriculture industry, mm. before uh, even sowing the seed, uh, the farmer will select a piece of land mm. and they examine the quality of the soil and also the geographical condition for specific seeds uh, uh, to be uh, grown. And then they will check for the season also, like rainfall or the spring season or how uh, uh, the winters are, how much harsh the winters are. Mm -hmm. And then they check for the accessibility of water source because water source is also a necessity. And uh, then manpower and electricity. So all these things in the uh, agriculture industry, they check. Once they select the land, then they plow the land treat the land with the fertilizers, maybe with the natural fertilizers and other necessary substance. And when the time is right, it should not be like that. They cannot uh, sow the seed in the winters uh, for certain crops and mm -hmm. cannot sow the seed in the summer to get the uh, fruitful uh, agriculture product from that. So, so when the time is right, then the seed of good quality, the quality of the seed also needs to be good. And after careful consideration of all these things, when seed sprouts and begin to grow, then also they nurture and take care of that to bear the fruitful product out of that. So that's, that's how the human body is also. And uh, in Ayurveda, we say that uh, it all depends upon the season, soil, uh, water seeds, four factors are really, really important when we come to the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And uh, time, time is very important. And there are certain time periods where uh, it's very easy to conceive. And there are certain time periods where we say that if somebody conceives, the conception might not be that fruitful. Mm. And then uh, if you see the soil, soil here means um, uh, correlate with the womb. So womb and female should be free of all the illness and uh, purified, uh, having the uh, mental ability to bear that pregnancy because pregnancy is not like an easy thing. Mm -hmm. Nine months you carry the baby and there are so many emotional changes going on within the body. Mm -hmm. So you have to prepare for that also mentally as well as physically. Mm -hmm. And then come the availability of nutrition from de for the development of fetus um, and that comes through the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. So the diet also needs to be really, really good, nurturing, uh, having more sattva guna. Sattva guna means, again, the purity of the food needs to be there. Mm -hmm. And finally, all these things depends upon the quality of the seed. Quality of seed mm -hmm. here means sperm and ovum. Yeah. That needs to be healthy and potent. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So where do we start? We start with the pre-preparation, mm -hmm. ideal age for the conception. Normally, mm -hmm. in if you see the Western medicine also, we say that uh, uh, it's good to have the baby uh, before the 35, if possible. Yes. Right now, lo yeah, a lot of people, because of the work pressure and the education, sometimes the things get delayed. But mm -hmm. yes, if you are physically and mentally fit for the pregnancy, go for that. Yeah. But yes, ideal age, they say that it's a 35. You know, I, I had a lecture on this when I was studying Ayurveda and it made so much sense to me. Uh, it, obviously, it's not ideal for everybody to have a child at 35 years of age. But I, in this lecture, the we, it was explained to us that or if you have a child later in life, you have less resources to give that developing fetus. And so it takes you longer as the mother to rejuvenate post birth in postpartum. And it takes longer for your body to get back to, you know, to status quo after the birth. Is that correct? Yes, that's mm. correct. Mm. Yeah. So the older you are, the longer it will take to rejuvenate. Exactly. Mm. Which makes sense because also. you have less resources as you get older. You're less, you're exactly. less vital. And, yeah. and also, it's like uh, not only the vitality, I will say, Kulit, that uh, we uh, less resources, that means physically also it's going to be taxing. Yeah. Mentally also it's going to be taxing because raising a baby, they say uh, that it takes a village to raise a baby. And then mm -hmm. here you are doing all alone by yourself, everything. Yes, yes, yes so true. 
And then uh, when you do the pre-preparation, the mental preparation is also very necessary. Mm. Uh, mental preparation, not only for male, uh, female, both of the partner uh, needs to be mentally prepared for that, especially the female, we say that, because there are changes in the hormones during pregnancy, which can cause mood swings. Mm -hmm. And um, hormones are the emotional triggers that make, uh, uh, I would say, the pregnant woman to be more vulnerable, sensitive, fragile. Mm -hmm. And uh, those all changes sometimes can lead to anxiety, anger, fear, stress uh, at various levels. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Mood change, some experience, uh, some of the women I came across when I was uh, teaching uh, the pre-pregnancy preparation uh, class, they tell, they told that um, there were some times when they experienced very violent and extreme emotion, mm. uh, which led to see the psychiatrist also. Wow. So that much hormonal uh, fluctuation we see during the pregnancy. So that uh, can lead to have a negative effect on the fetus if the mom's mental health is not uh, uh, up to that uh, level. And that those emotions actually give rise to the prakriti constitution of the embryo. And that depends upon the emotional health of the mom and uh, dad and their physical uh, and the mental stress level and diet and so many environmental factors. So uh, normally, whenever the child has some issue, uh, for example, ADHD kids, I said, blame yourself. Exactly. <laughs> no, <not> literally. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever bad happens, we blame it to our parents. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's not like that. But yeah, mm -hmm. few uh, fear and anger can lead to genetic uh, chromosomal abnormalities also. We, we have seen so many researches happened where they have uh, seen that the anxiety, fear, uh, put the uh, fetus into the distress and uh, uh, later on after birth also there were studies going on where they saw that the newborn has the signs of depression so that mm -hmm. was like uh, alarming wow. and here comes the Ayurveda where say that during pregnancy and before conception also mom's mental health needs to be really evaluated so they, they always say that uh, keep the mom ha uh, happy she should not be alone. She should be in the company of good friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, that takes away a lot of stress also out of the mind. And then the mom, if mom is happy, the baby is definitely going to be uh, really healthy. It's wonderful. Great information there. And then uh, I would say that uh, 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 when I was talking about the purification of the seeds, that the quality of the seed needs to be really, really good. Mm -hmm. So here comes the importance of panch karma. Mm -hmm. If uh, somebody does not know the meaning of panch karma, panch karma means actually purification of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is not like uh, that uh, purification happens overnight. So you have to prepare the body for the panch karma. Uh, it's not a, uh, I would say that it's not a simply a bunch of therapies where you can correlate, okay, uh, Basti is just an anima. The entire concept of Panch Karma is too um, extremely scientific and each of the steps and the procedures are important, have important role to play in the process of purification of the body. Mm. There are certain therapies uh, which can be de uh, done uh, before uh, conception uh, to purify uh, the quality or to improve the quality of the ovum and the sperms. And that uh, panchkarma uh, needs to be done under the strictly under the qualified uh, Ayurveda practitioner or Ayurveda physician or the Vaidya. And panchkarma actually facilitate conception and also helps with the implantation of embryo. And it mm. not only, um, uh, I would say that it not only gives a benefit till that also, it, continue ben it, it gives the continued benefit to ensure a smooth pregnancy and smooth delivery also. Mm -hmm. And afterwards also, it gives benefit to mom and baby. And there are certain protocols for the panchkarma where you have to follow certain diet before the starting the panchkarma. And then uh, the panch karma uh, days, uh, depending upon uh, the uh, your vadya or your Ayurveda practitioner, five days, seven days, ten days, or more. And then again, you have to follow certain diet after the panch karma. Uh, the whole concept is purify the body, 
improves the quality of the sperm and the ovum uh, so that uh, the pregnancy should be healthy mm-hmm. and uh, here i will emphasize more on the diet after the panchakarma so when we talk about the diet after the panchakarma we know that in ayurveda we say that the body is made up of seven layers right rasa mm-hmm. rakta mansa meeda asthi majja uh, the ultimate essence of the food is which is uh, start with the rasa and goes into the shukra dhatu shukra dhatu which is the final and deepest layer of body tissue mm-hmm. and the by product of the shukra dhatu is uh, semen and ovum mm-hmm. and if we see that uh, uh, little bit of uh, deeper meaning of that that is uh, the properties of shukra dhatu is correlated to the kapha mm. kapha dosha it has mm-hmm. the affinity to kapha and shukra dhatu is the one which is responsible for your immune system for strength energy and uh, positive energy prana in the body and that shukra dhatu how we can accumulate to improve the quality of semen and ova there are certain foods which we say that milk butter um, honey figs almonds ghee raisins the dates all these foods help in um, once you are done with the panchakarma Mm-hmm. it helps in improving keep on improving the quality of the semen and quality of the ovum uh, to ensure that uh, there is a healthy pregnancy wonderful i have a question before you go on about the panchakarma because i know it's important about how far in advance you go through the panchakarma is that correct yes yes so you want to do it several months before you plan on conceiving we normally say that before the 3 months if you start the preparation for the panchakarma and then after you do uh, that depends upon person to person because yes. uh, ayurveda is like an individualized uh, approach absolutely and it is customized according to the health so it it all depends upon how uh, your ayurveda pr- practitioner suggest to go for 21 days or Uh, 15 days or 7 days of panchakarma mm-hmm. but yes 3 uh, months before the pregnancy if you start preparing the body and then follow the diet afterwards which that's why i was more emphasizing on the diet afterwards yes through throughout till you uh, deliver the baby i would say that diet is very important uh, and uh, that that is one one thing which we say that uh, you should go for that and panchakarma definitely it helps uh, 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 with a healthy baby and a healthy mind for both the parents and not only mom the dad also needs to be sometimes goes under the panchakarma yes. and uh, yes and uh, that is 3 uh, to 4 months before the pregnancy okay great to know because i had a client just email me actually last week and she was trying to conceive but she had heard that it wasn't good to cleanse while you're trying to conceive and i actually said i'd i'd ask this question to you um mm-hmm. so like we normally recommend 3 months out of course it's individualized for each person but what would you say to somebody who's trying to conceive right now and they're also interested in cleansing uh, would you encourage them to just focus on those foods that you m- mentioned or what would what would you in general obviously you would want to ask her a lot more individual questions but in general what would you recommend for somebody i would say that uh, there are certain therapies which you can go safely while uh, uh, trying for the conception also mm-hmm. uh maybe um ms is uh, vamana and virachana and basti might not be a good idea when mm-hmm. you are already trying for the pregnancy mm-hmm. but rest of the things like uh, gentle uh, abhyanga shirodhara mm-hmm. uh, those things uh, can be done uh, um, and you can always uh, 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 take the help from the ghee because ghee mm-hmm. has uh, I um, mean, uh, the has the property to loosen all the toxins uh, stuck in various areas of the body. Mm-hmm. Uh, steam also, depending upon the constitution and all. Though if they are trying for the pregnancy right now, then the, the steam might not be a good option. Uh, extreme steam might not be a good option, mm-hmm. but shorter duration can be done. Okay. Small number of purification therapies mm-hmm. during a uh, trying period can be done mm-hmm. but not the aggressive one. Okay, that's understandable. Great. And I'm making sure that your nutrition is good obviously as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you for covering that. 
uh, and uh, the diet, as we, we were talking about the diet, the ghee, uh, ghee should always be taken with the meals to purify the food even further. Mm. We say that unless until somebody is having a uh, different uh, like a gestational diabetes or uh, uh, in the previous pregnancy or has the history of high cholesterol, then it's a different story. Mm -hmm. But for uh, at least two teaspoons of ghee, uh, we say that uh, for the mom needs to be taken uh, with uh, every meal. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, iron rich food, like uh, uh, we more emphasizes uh, for the uh, rakta dhatu mm -hmm. means uh, to increase the hemoglobin also yeah. like dates black raisins pomegranate even the uh, dried figs you can soak uh, uh, that is also good and obviously the green leafy vegetables which are uh, very rich uh, in the iron content uh, like spinach that can be taken uh, uh, or included in the female diet and the male diet as well Wonderful. and then there, uh, there are some uh, uh, rejuvenating tonics also, which we uh, say that uh, like Shatavari, Amla, mm -hmm. Ashugandha, uh, and uh, Trikatu. Trikatu is a combination of three Ayurvedic herbs in an equal quantity, uh, dry ginger powder, black pepper, and a long pepper combined together. And that uh, Trikatu actually helps in improving the digestive system. Uh, and uh, also uh, considered as a rejuvenating tonic, uh, especially the pipli, which is a long pepper, considered as a rejuvenating tonic. So uh, uh, when we talk about the shatavari, it's a very versatile. It, it, it is really good when you are preparing for the pregnancy after the panchkarma because it's a rejuvenating herb. So it's always good to use after the panchkarma mm -hmm. uh, if you are opting for panchkarma. And then um, um, you can take uh, throughout the pregnancy also, and uh, it facilitates the uh, milk production also. So during the postpartum phase or breastfeeding phase also, it's really, really good. And this Shatavri is really good when it comes to the menopause also. Mm -hmm. So Shatavri is such a good female-friendly uh, uh, herb, which... Uh, uh, females can use at different stages of their life. So that shatavri we always say is that include in the uh, boil with the milk and take one cup of milk daily along with that. We will come to that also. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we say that uh, uh, in Ayurveda we say that there are like a um, the pregnancy is really a gift. There are 16 sanskars, sanskar we talk and uh, then uh, uh, this is the one sanskar which a woman goes through, mostly women goes through this one. And uh, in this, when we are talking about the diet uh, uh, and uh, the mental preparation, uh, there is one more uh, thing which I will uh, like to say that uh, in Ayurveda, we say that there are certain natural urges, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, which one should not control. Especially during pregnancy, one should emphasize on uh, not controlling those urges. For example, the urination, bowel movements, hunger, thirst. Uh, if you have urge to sneeze, uh, you should sneeze. Mm. Um, it should never be suppressed. The mm -hmm. reason is, uh, for example, if you are suppressing the urination uh, and you want to use to go to uh, use the restroom and for some reason you think, OK, uh, let's wait for five minutes or ten minutes. So, that can lead to, during the pregnancy especially, can lead to urinary tract infection because mm -hmm. that is a vulnerable time where urinary tract infection can happen very easily. Mm -hmm. And that is going to put a pressure on the uterus. Once there is a pressure on the uterus, that will put a fetus into the distress. So if you see that natural urges, why we don't need to suppress, why we should not suppress, there is a scientific way of explanation that. It's not like that the sages said that, okay, don't do that. But there is a scientific explanation that uh, for that, that why we should not uh, suppress the uh, certain urges, natural urges. So that's why uh, uh, we emphasize on that also that the uh, natural urges should not uh, suppress. Mm -hmm. uh, food should not be spicy, mm -hmm. not too hot and uh, not a pungent. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason for that, that is also because it, during the initial phase of the pregnancy, we want the body to be keep cooling uh, uh, with the help of the diet. That's why we emphasize more on, okay, drink the cold milk instead of the warm milk. Why? The reason is because uh, the body naturally wants to sustain that pregnancy. Mm-hmm. So if we do the spicy or hot or pungent food, that is increasing the pata in the body. Mm-hmm. And pitta can lead to the anger and again can lead to the imbalance in the fetus and the mom. Right, exactly. And then uh, there are certain foods which we say that it is not good to have, especially uh, when it comes to smoking. And uh, we all know that smoking can lead to uh, various uh, birth defects Mm -hmm. in the fetus. And then the alcohol also. Mm. Smoking uh, um, during the pregnancy pregnancy, can have a, a devastating effect, um, can actually hamper the physical, mental, and intellectual development of the baby. Mm-hmm. And there has been a research done in Harvard where they say that uh, if uh, the mom, uh, even before conception, she is a habitual smoking. Here, habitual smoking means it, uh, it's like a, uh, where she is indulging into the smoking uh, uh, that can lead uh, to the uh, uh, poor intellectual capacity of the baby. Oh. And uh, then the diet and, uh, uh, sorry, the yoga also, uh, we say that it's very, very good. And uh, one should do yoga asana according to their constitution. Yes. And uh, they should perform it regularly. Mm-hmm. And there are certain asanas uh, 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 which can be really, really uh, helpful, like butterfly pose. If you don't know the yoga, then at least regular walks, pranayam, deep breathing techniques can be really, really helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure all these dinacharya self-care practices, putting them in place during uh, preconception stage is wonderful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Dinacharya explain, explanation for the pregnant woman is also very, very uh, helpful, mm-hmm. where they say that uh, wake up early, go for a uh, outdoor walking uh, and eat sattvic and nourishing food, eat meals at regular intervals, because that's how your body is going to nourish the baby. Mm-hmm. They say that it is not only your nourishment is important, it's the fetus nourishment also. And fetus nourishment comes from the mother only. Mm-hmm. So whatever mother is consuming yes. and uh, certain foods uh, such as cabbage, cauliflower, uh, kidney beans, uh, dried peas, all the kind of uh, like dried beans or legumes, uh, then bell pepper, uh, those, those are, uh, if somebody can, uh, they, it, it needs to be in moderation or if you can avoid completely. Okay. So you're um, saying like uh, nightshades, which would be heating exactly. and legumes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because those are water provoking. Voila, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And for the pregnancy, we definitely need more kapha food, uh, which helps in us uh, having the good quality of uh, kapha. So ultimately, it can nourish the baby and the mom. Wonderful. Uh, can I ask a question about uh, the yoga again? I know you said it should be dosha specific, but I guess people should avoid the hot yoga, the intense yoga practices, because that yes, will yes. Bitter. Okay, just to clarify that, because there is a lot of that available now. Yeah. yeah. No, that you, if we are talking about the yoga here, yoga needs to be very gentle. That's mm-hmm. why I always emphasize if you don't know which yoga practice is good for you, then it's better to go uh, do the outdoor walking, do the pranayam, deep yes. breathing techniques mm-hmm. are more uh, 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 fruitful for you. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about the pranayam also, the bhastrika is the one of the pranayam, which I would say avoid or do under strictly uh, supervision, professional supervision, because that also uh, can create a negative impact on the pregnancy. Right. So, yeah, alternate nostril breathing is always good. But mm-hmm. when it comes to um, Bhastrika, then definitely we need to be very careful. Yeah, that makes sense. So anything too intense to, yes. to steer clear of during this time. Perfect. Thank you. And... Uh, uh, then excessive heat, as we were talking about the hot yoga also, mm. uh, that excess of pitta dosha, that will actually change the pH. 
and uh, that can lead to excessive heat in throughout the body. Yeah. And that if the heat is too high in the body due uh, before the conception or when you are trying for the conception, uh, that can uh, the sperms can be destroyed because of that heat. Yeah. And conception cannot be happen because the body is very uh, uh, high pitta. Well, that's so interesting. Yes, because I guess the sperms are kept in a sack outside the body because they need to be housed in a cooler temperature. So if it's exactly. too, just too high, that would make total sense. And that's how the psychological aspect also. If there is so much anger inside, that mm-hmm. is again in, going to increase the pitta. And yeah. that is going to either destroy the sperm uh, or uh, hamper the quality of the sperm. So the, the, the conception might not be that fruitful uh, for if there is a psychological issues yes. going on that. Yes. The body is so amazing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then uh, during the preconception, uh, one, uh, for the, especially for the females, they have to monitor their menstrual cycle also mm. because... Uh, uh, a regular menstrual cycle means there is a hormonal balance. Mm-hmm. If there is a problem with the menstrual cycle or the, there is a, um, I would say that uh, the lifestyle is not good uh, or if there is a thyroid issue and if there is a hypertension or uh, uh, swelling in the uh, body or uh, fluid retention. So that means the hormonal imbalance is already there. Yeah. So that is the time where they should consider definitely before conceiving, they should consider for the panch karma. Okay. And there can be so many uh, variable when there is a uh, difficulty in pregnancy. Sometimes uh, infertility can be because of the imbalances, can be uh, because of the infections in the urinary tract or reproductive tract. Uh, sometimes uh, we say that the sperm quality is not good, but mm-hmm. definitely for that, you have to go to the your gynecological doctor and uh, ruled out all those things. Uh, mm-hmm. If there is a hormonal imbalance or if the sperm quality is not good. Okay. And uh, uh, during periods also in Ayurveda, we say that one should avoid certain food uh, like oily, spicy, fermented products, mm. um, kind of like tamarind, sour yogurt, uh, because all these are going to lead to what and pitta imbalance. Mm-hmm. And it, those are not good for if you are trying for the pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you want to focus on good quality foods, nourishing foods, um, avoiding anything that's uh, pitta provoking or vata provoking, and making sure that the food is of high quality. Yeah, the food, mm-hmm. because uh, the diet is the vaj, which is the sap or a sense of the ahar rasa, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so whatever the pregnant woman is eating or able to digest, that is going to nourish the fetus inside. Yes. Yeah. And that's why we definitely want the ahar rasa or the foods to be really, really pure and uh, having good qualities. Because it uh, it will, first of all, it will nourish mom Mm -hmm. mom's body Mm -hmm. and then it will improve the quality and quantity of the breast milk also yes later on Mm -hmm. and help and nourish obviously the uh, developing fetus also so there are three uh things main uh during the pregnancy we uh uh uh, uh, focus on that uh, the diet needs to be really really important here Mm -hmm. uh, before pregnancy during pregnancy and after the birth, if you uh, want to have a good quality of uh, the breast milk. Yes. So yes. you are preparing the body for the breast milk for the good pregnancy. And then during pregnancy or so you want to nourish the baby um, through the food. Mm-hmm. Uh, for that also, the diet needs to be really, really pure. And then comes after the delivery, when you want to feed the baby breast milk, then also the importance of diet comes. Wonderful. And I'm sure we'll go into that then in the next episode about postpartum and breastfeeding and so on. Yes. That's great. And uh, there is, um, uh, uh, before I forget, there is Mm -hmm. one other essential food which one should include, that is uh, honey. Mm -hmm. The expectant mother, we say that in Ayurveda, that ideally they should have one or two teaspoon of honey every day. First of all, if you see the qualities of honey, it's sweet in nature. Mm 
mm-hmm. little bit astringent also mm-hmm. and uh, honey is very good when you want to improve the intelligence and it balances pitta and kapha dosha okay so yes and for the mom also it will lead to um, uh, glow on the skin and enhances the complexion uh, nourishing uh, and uh, uh, we say that uh, beneficial for the eyes and helps to purify the blood so it provides the nourishment also and also it purifies the blood also mm-hmm. so spoonful of honey uh, before the breakfast or um, uh in the milk uh, here i will say that uh, do not put do not heat up the honey mm-hmm. uh it, it, if you are want to add in the milk the milk needs to be only lukewarm not hot hot that can be done okay and uh, nowadays uh, honey is easily available unfiltered unpasteurized uh, local honey is right. always good to go with that right so yeah. you're going with the raw honey raw and local ideally perfect. yes perfect and uh, uh here i will emphasize uh, uh, one more thing uh, when we are talking about the diet the greens the importance of the greens mm-hmm. the different type of carbs uh, um a rice very easy to digest so one should consume rice because uh, um rice actually again help uh, with uh, cooling the body and uh, should be part of daily intake uh i in ayurveda we say that rice is very easy to digest and uh, uh, suitable to all constitution and um, there is a certain type of rice which is uh, aged rice rice which are more than 1 year old mm. uh, those are the rice which is easy to digest nutritious uh, because the quality of uh, rice when you keep it you keep on improving and uh, those are which helps in neutralize vata and pitta and okay. nourishes kapha. Yes. Uh can I ask you cuz I know a lot of people are wondering right now we hear so much about brown rice or whole or whole grain rice versus white rice what do you recommend? I would recommend uh, um uh I mean the white rice and the brown rice are also good. The brown rice are considered to be old old rice. Mhm. So oh. when we are talking about the old rice so we can go with the brown rice. Okay. But that depends upon uh, uh the digestive system also. Exactly. Cuz a lot yeah. of if you have a high vata constitution or vata aggravation it may be challenging to digest the um the brown rice isn't that correct? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So that's why then uh, you can go with the white rice. Okay, great. And uh, simple recipe for the uh, how it can be nutrient to your body and to the fetus is in the form of khichdi mm. or you can prepare the stew with the moong dal or uh, mang dal or any dal lentils a mm-hmm. uh, few drops of lemon juice you can incorporate in that and uh, uh, dribble with the pure ghee mm-hmm. and uh, that is not only easy on the digestive system but also very nutritious and uh, Uh, tasty because it is uh, rich in uh, proteins because mm-hmm. of the lanterns mm-hmm. uh, fat good fat i would say that in the form of ghee mm-hmm. and uh, good carbs so easy to digest in the form of rice wonderful and you would use either lentils or mung beans yes okay yes. and then soaking the mung beans overnight yeah okay. and if somebody does not want to consume rice or wheat then there are other grains also uh, millets also there are certain millets which we say that uh, it's really good they can do that sorghum okay. is very good that also you can incorporate in the daily intake but rice and wheat and sorghum are the uh, most nutritious uh, 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 grains we say that wonderful thank you and then uh, water intake how one should do the water also the wa- water also needs to be little lukewarm mm-hmm. uh not hot you can infused with the trikato if you want to or just plain boil and that that is also uh very good for uh, uh, uh to keep the blood sugar levels uh, proper and also to flush out the kidneys because uh, the pregnancy during the pregnancy the mom is more prone to the Uter- uh, urinary tract infections mm. so if the water intake is optimal that also helps in flushing out the kidneys and prevent the urinary tract infections okay 
And the trick or two that you mentioned earlier is the ground ginger and the pippoli, the long pepper. Yes. Now, yes. is that yeah. aggravating for somebody who has a lot of heat in the body, aggravated pitta? Uh, if they are taking like a pinch or a couple of pinch, depending upon the season also, yes, if it is in the summer, then I would definitely avoid that. Mm -hmm. But if it is uh, um, during the winter season, then a pinch or a couple of pinch they can opt for. Or alternate to tricato is uh, carve seeds uh, oh, yeah. uh, and the fennel seeds also can be taken. Oh, yes, that's a good option. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, when we were talking about the shatavri, uh, uh, maybe half teaspoon you can boil in the cup of the milk. Uh, here, milk, uh, when we talk about the milk, we say cow milk, but it can be because of lactose intolerance or um, casein uh, allergy it can mm -hmm. be other forms of milk also but shatavari is a really good combination uh, to include in the daily regimen for uh, mom to be or during the uh, during pregnancy and before pregnancy also absolutely it's a wonderful herb also uh, i would emphasize on the good music also mm. because a lot of research has been done on the uh, that if the baby can uh, listen to the music or the outdoor out uh, noises so uh, the good music also plays an important role because that will help in um, uh, bringing the harmony mm -hmm. uh, even the yog nidra recently i was uh, reading an article for the yog nidra mm -hmm. uh, for the pregnant woman uh, which brings peace and uh, have a really good effect on the growth of the uh, fetus. Mm. So that also can be done. But definitely those things uh, for that, you need to have a professional who can teach you how to do the proper way of a yog nidra. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's really been aware, I guess, of your sensory stimulation and what you're taking in through your senses, not only thinking about the food, but thinking about what you're exposing yourself to on a daily basis. Yeah. Like you said, the music and, and what are you taking in? What are you listening to? Because that, of course, is affecting your body and then affecting the, in, in the baby as well. And also, I mean, limit to, uh, we say that limit to the programs which are violent in nature. For example, if mm. you are movie, uh, watching the movie and your emotional status also changes by watching those things, uh, if the mom becomes jealous or angry or mm. any negative thought, mm. that can cause the child to uh, having the development issues, uh, slow growth. And sometimes... Uh, um, uh, uh, that can uh, alter the constitution of the baby also more uh, pitta baby uh, where there will yes. be you will see later on life more anger more mm -hmm. jealousy in the baby also so it's best to avoid the possibility of mother even getting into such situation so that's why the soothing music is the one which we always emphasize or the meditation depending upon their belief if they believe in the meditation mm -hmm. or any kind of soothing music uh, uh, is good to go also, sleeping too much, uh, more than mm -hmm. eight to nine hours, that uh, if you see that that creates laziness uh, and uh, even um, uh, brings excessive kapha in the body. Mm -hmm. And that also is not good. So uh, when we talk about that, we should use our senses in a proper way. So that also like if you want to rest up uh, during uh, um, the afternoon, uh, the cat nap might be a good idea, but mm. not uh, a long duration of the sleep is not a good idea during the daytime. Okay, so and, like 15, uh, 20 minutes or so. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. 30 minutes uh, is a, a good time frame, but not like two to three hours, unless right. until there is a, a physical condition going on mm -hmm. with the mom. Absolutely. And the environment also needs to be uh, clean, tidy, uh, uh, she should avoid the places uh, where there is uh, extreme smells going on mm. um, because that can trigger the nausea. If we see the scientific way also, uh, that uh, that can trigger the nausea and that can bring uh, sometimes um, uh, frustration also in the mom and that ultimately leads to the uh, uh, for the development of the baby also. Mm. And... Uh, uh, also, the tight clothes. In Ayurveda, there is one uh, uh, chapter where they uh, have said uh, all about well, how we, early days of pregnancy or before the conception, how we should uh, 
uh, stay, mm. the tight clothes, uh, loud noises, uh, strenuous physical activities, mm. uh, gym, heavy weights should be avoided if yeah. we can. Uh, mm. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. So it's going back to really what you said at the start of the show, Vidya Manakshi, is that, you know, these samskars, you're laying down these impressions or what I refer to as the matrix of this baby during conception process. So having awareness around everything that's coming into your body and your environment and so on is so important. And I think this information from Ayurveda is amazing. And it's something that is very eye opening and that we don't often think of in the West, but this whole preparation preconception phase is so important. It definitely, it is very very important mm. because if you see uh, sometimes uh, if if simply we see the infertility cost, everything is fine, the mm. uterus condition is perfect. And sperm quality is good, but then also conception is not happening. Mm. Uh, and when you dig a little bit deeper into that, then you see the parents are parents to be like they are under very much stress. Mm -hmm. And that stress and mental agitation sometimes uh, can hamper the pregnancy, Absolutely. can be the cause of uh, infertility. Yes, it's like you said, you know, you're you're preparing the soil for your seed. And exactly. you really have to make sure that soil is of the highest quality and that there's no agitation in there and then it's fertile. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So is there anything else that you want to add in the preconception and pre-planning phase? We've covered so if, much. This information is amazing. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So uh, definitely towards the end, I would say that, uh, uh, first of all, physical health is important. Mm -hmm. Mental health is important. Diet before the conception, as mm -hmm. we say that, prepare your body, mm -hmm. prepare the seeds uh, and nurture your body mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the time of the pregnancy. All these four things uh, plays an important role in healthy conception. Wonderful. Not only in healthy conception, but also for the uh, proper health of the mom after the delivery, for the breastfeeding also, mm. and for uh, uh, proper growth of the fetus. Wonderful. And I do actually have a question on the time period, which is one of those four points. Um, we, we talked about how it's ideally before 35 years of age. Is there an ideal time of the year I mean, I know most most people can't really choose this ideal time of the year. But in Ayurveda, <laughs> is there an ideal time of the year to conceive? They say that uh, during the winters, it is the ideal time to conceive. But mm -hmm. that, that also changes uh, because there are so many geographical areas yes. we, we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are certain areas where it is totally winters all throughout the year. Sure. So, yeah. So, but yeah, there are certain days where uh, we say that uh, one should not conceive, uh, especially during uh, the phase when the moon is uh, going down, mm -hmm. uh, weaning phase. Yes. Uh, those those days are not good. Uh, uh, it is said that. And uh, then there are, uh, 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 when you are trying for the conception, uh, one to 16 days are the best first days of the menstruation till 16 days are the best time to conceive. Okay. Um, having said that means uh, the bleeding needs to be stopped completely. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can start uh, looking for the uh, time period for the for the conception. Okay. So these are the time periods that definitely uh, in Ayurveda have mentioned. Great. That's great information. And thank you so much. I think we delve so deep. We've talked about preconception before in the podcast, but this really opened up that conversation a lot more. And you covered so much in really great depth, Vidya Manakshi, and I really appreciate that. And I look forward to our next conversation where we're going to continue on because there's so much to cover that we need a whole nother episode to discuss the month-to-month -month diet and lifestyle and then the postpartum care and breastfeeding. So I think, yes, we definitely need a whole nother episode just for that. Yeah, definitely. We will cover uh, uh, what the diet, month-to-month uh, -month diet Fantastic. during the pregnancy, how they need to take care of not only the diet for the physical changes also, how they need to prepare mentally for that mm. and what can be done, what type of food they can, uh, can uh, adapt and what type of activities they should do uh, 
so that the preg- uh, the delivery will be smooth and uh, there will be a, a nurturing breast milk available for the baby and in that episode we will also discuss uh, how we should take care uh, during those 40 days after the childbirth yes because in uh, ayurveda we say that there are 40 days where the body is becomes very fragile because your body goes through so much during the labor mm-hmm. and it needs to bring back to the normal state and it takes minimum 40 days yes uh, and the diet also uh, during that period also needs to be very light so we will discuss that uh, during that period and i yeah. agree i think postpartum is extremely important because there's so much change at that time for both mom and baby and and i think this is something that we don't really look into in the west and i think it's something that we need to look deeper into and mom needs more support and understanding around this time of what the changes she's gone through in her body and and vata pacifying foods and lifestyle so i look forward to delving deep into that yeah Wonderful. me too great yeah so before i let you go vidya manakshi can you tell us you mentioned that you do some courses do you have some information on this on your website or can you let people know where they can go out find more information about you please uh i offer uh, online courses uh, on various uh, topics of ayurveda mm-hmm. and uh, all the information can be found on my website www.ayurroots.com a y u r roots r o o t s.com or you can like my facebook page my instagram page uh, because all the information i post on various social media and uh, you can reach us uh, to me at uh, uh, reach out to me at uh, 2148011238 and i provide uh, uh, consultations on uh, various health issues as well as online and the skype consultation as well wonderful and you're based in texas yes i'm based in texas dallas plano area uh, but as i said uh, if you are not in the texas area or if you are not in the united states then also i provide uh, uh, online consultations uh, through skype consultations as well as the phone consultations wonderful and i'll put all those links in the show notes so you can access those easily just click on over to the show notes uh, to access those thank you so so much Uh, for coming on the show Thank today you, it's been really great conversation and i think you just shared so much and a great wealth of knowledge so i truly appreciate it thank you kali for having me on the show i really appreciate that uh, uh, for giving me the platform to share the knowledge and bring the awareness about yeah. uh, because pregnancy is the one of the gift which is very uh, uh, i would say beautiful gift given by the god and uh, the mothers and the babies everybody needs to be on the uh, healthier state uh, mm-hmm. and uh, for that we need to definitely prepare the body for the pregnancy that's why they say that pregnancy should be by choice uh, mm-hmm. not by an accident yes wonderful thank you so much and i look forward to chatting with you again very soon for our second part yeah. of the series definitely okay. yeah thank in the meantime so my pleasure take good care of yourself and we'll chat soon I hope you enjoyed that episode. Such fantastic information there from Ayurvedic physician Manakshi Gupta. And please visit the show notes for all the links to ayurroots.com, the link to enter into the competition for a chance to win a free entry into my upcoming seasonal cleanse, online cleanse, and also for the upcoming retreat in the south of France in October. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you find that this information will be helpful to any friends or family members, please share this episode with them. And thanks for listening in. Take good care of yourself. Be well and ciao for now.